Hello and welcome back to Around the Block. Hope you're all doing well today and you're looking forward to today's episode, which is going to be a bit longer than the usual episodes. Today, we've got Dortmund and Bayer Leverkusen coming up, but I didn't realise that just before those two games, we'd have the winter break. And over this winter break, I kind of want to talk to you guys about a few things. Before we get into that, though, I do want to quickly go through the fixtures since you guys were last here for the Schalke draw and Cologne 4-0 victory. We've played eight games in between episodes, which is quite a few of them. Uh, but I think we need to get through this season pretty quickly to try and secure some European football for next season. And that's where the interesting stuff really happens. So we started off with a 3-1 win over Dinamo Dresden in the Cup second round. Adiemi with a brace and Zoltan Horvath with one. Uh, both goals quite late on actually in that game to win it. We got a bit lucky in that game I must say. We then had a little bit of a dodgy November almost. A 3-1 win against Hanover was a pretty good start. Adiemi, Morovsky and Rogler with the goals in that one. But then we had two draws in a row which were games a little bit annoying to draw I must say. A 0-0 draw with Werder Bremen wasn't brilliant and then a 2-2 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt was okay because Frankfurt were fifth in the table at the time so it wasn't the worst result possible but it's a game I really felt that we could have really you know taken by the scruff of the neck and won. In the end we got very lucky to draw it actually Jez Jezevic scored the opening goal of the game they scored two and then Michael Brinker who's a backup right side of player essentially you can play anywhere down that right hand side he scored a goal in the 91st minute there to rescue a point which was quite nice and then we finished the month off with a 1-0 win over Hoffenheim with Katsikas getting the goal you notice as well in this Hoffenheim game we changed to a five at the back system in preparation for the Bayern Munich game really it was probably a bad idea to play five at the back against a team that was sitting in the bottom half of the table in preparation for a team at the top of the table with a formation designed to sort of counteract uh, by Munich's formations and, and how good they are. So got lucky to win that game against Hoffenheim. But the five at the back system did well against Bayern Munich, but it is Bayern Munich. They're one of the best teams in the game at the moment. So uh, they did manage to beat us 2-1 to extend their lead at the top of the table. We switched back to the normal 4-2-3-1 for a 0-0 draw against Augsburg, which wasn't brilliant. Before we switched to the 4-3-3 to have a 3-1 victory over bottom of the table, Ingolstadt with Rogler and Zoltan Horvath getting the goals in that game. What it means for the league table is, well, we sit fourth right now on 29 points. Three points behind Bayer Leverkusen just ahead of us in the table so winning against them today would be quite nice uh, we are four points clear of Frankfurt in fifth and six points clear or five points clear sorry of uh, Wolfsburg in sixth so I think if we keep maintaining our level of performance and form we should easily be inside the top six come the end of the season but I think as we stand right now the target has to be top four now if I'm honest with you I haven't felt we've really scored enough goals this season but actually if you look down the league table four list we've scored 24 goals only Leverkusen Dortmund and Bayern Munich have scored scored more than us this season so actually we're sitting quite nicely in fourth place uh, in the league and in the goal scored table so it's not actually that bad it's the goals against we're doing really well in only consider 10 goals all season the same as Bayern Munich and the money that we spent on our defence this season to improve what, a goalkeeper, a new right back, a new left back and a new centre back as well. So four new players essentially in that sort of back five essentially with the goalkeeper included. Uh, that's really, really paid off. Without that, there's not a chance we'll be in fourth place in the table right now. Those guys have really performed well as you can see, only conceding 10 goals all season. That was what I wanted to improve first. Improve the back and that'll improve results generally really before you can improve strikes and stuff like that so that was a really important move to make and it's paid off dividends right now if it wasn't for that i don't think we'd even be top six but of course we do still need to improve the squad obviously we're only fourth on the table there are still ways we can improve the squad and as we are approaching january i'm thinking we need to spend some money on some january transfers until i was alerted by my assistant manager to our under 19 team where three players could easily slot into the first team. So if we head to our under 19 squad uh, right down here, uh, we can see we've got three players in the under 19 squad who are actually really, really good. So we'll start off with uh, Carsten Cording, the 17 year old fullback with apparently three and a half stars of current ability and five star potential. What I will say is, Star ability seems to be massively influenced, I think from experience by the form of the player. And as you can see, all these players are nearly an 8 rating, if not above an 8 rating. Which makes you think these ratings in their under-19s games are massively inflating their actual current ability. Because if you look at the progress, the progress does not look realistic. We're in December 2030, and it says two and a half, or one and a half star in September, and now suddenly three and a half star in December. So unless they're on steroids or something, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So this is why I think that form has massively 
influence these star abilities. Because again, we look at cast and cording, it does look like a really, really good player, particularly for 17 years old and things like that. But if we look at his development, look at the progress and look at attributes, we can see that like, okay, crossing has gone from nine to a 10 from August to December in six months. Decisions 16 to 16. Pace has gone from 16 to, to 17 by the looks of the arrows there. Uh, but agility 14 to 15. Uh, off the ball has gone from 12 to, if I can find it on there, 12 to 12. It's not been moved at all. It's just gone from 12 to 12. So I don't really feel like it's actually three and a half stars. But if the assistant managers seem to think so, I mean, the guy's got 16 judging ability and 17 potential who he use. So he can't be that wrong. And at this rate, he's putting this guy miles better than Harish Buncevic. Next up is Simon Dopatka, which we actually looked at right at the start of the season because he's the libero guy, which I was very impressed with. And he's got really good physicals, some decent mentals, and his technicals are not bad, to be fair, particularly for 18 years old again. But he's been told that he's three and a half stars current ability. And just to put this into perspective, they reckon that he's better than Diogo all of a sudden, which I, I, I can't see myself. I think Diogo is a lot better maybe not technically actually but mentally and physically Diogo I think is a lot better so I'm very confused by these star in fact they rate him at four star here look four stars that can't I just how is this this can't quite be right I mean Hans Jorg Wolf from down here as well uh, is a left winger um, looks pretty decent as well really good crossing and, and dribbling and things like that but uh, isn't quite rated as highly as well he is, he's rated higher than Jez Jezevich according to our uh, this lad who I think might have got things all wrong, if I'm honest with you. And I know what you're going to say, and I'll address it right now. Tom, this looks like you're cheating. I know it does. Because this it, it looks un, very unrealistic and unbelievable that they've these guys are suddenly developed in our under-19 squad to crap to the best players in the squad, apparently. I am really confused by it. I'm not quite sure... I, ge I genuinely think it's like the rating, average ratings that's really sorted out. But I promise you, promise you, promise you, there's no cheating involved. Because I got really worried when I saw this and thought, this is what you guys are going to think. If I put these guys in the first team all of a sudden and they're the best players, you'll just think I'm cheating. I promise you I'm not. Game status, in-game editor allowed, no, nothing like that. So I think what we need to do is put them in the first team and give them some game time and sort of see what's going on. The issue with the first team, though, is that it is massive. It is absolutely massive. Um, and part of the issue is it's so big. Players like those under-18 players that we've just seen, they slip through the gaps a little bit, and I, and I miss them. The thing with RB Leipzig is uh, we have an under-19 squad and we have a senior squad. No reserve squad or under-23 squad. I wasn't given the choice to have one, which is a little bit weird because they usually ask you if you want one, but they, I wasn't asked, so we don't have one. Not sure if we ever will have one. And that's a bit of an issue because it means that the squad or the first-team squad is ridiculously big and I hate it because I don't like having all these names to trawl through more than anything else. So I think what we need to do is really streamline the squad massively to the point where I've highlighted these players here. I'm going to try and sell all these players. They're three star potential and below. Three star potential is not good enough for us. Three star, I mean, these guys at three and a half star, you could argue they should be going as well, really. Are they actually going to reach the level that we require? Probably not. But for now, as they potentially could do, we'll keep hold of them for another season or so. They've got another few years on my contract, so we've got a little time with some of them. But these players here, with potentially the exception of Omar Ragic, who is our first choice, or maybe not anymore, centre-back, or one of our first choice centre-backs, he may have to go, as Tyler Adams might have to do as well. But his contract ends at the end of the season. He's also a very versatile player, and I'd kind of like to keep him for his versatility and things like that but not on 96 grand a week to be a, a squad player. So uh, if we, I'll look to try and sell these players at some point later on, but if we sort it suddenly by contract expiry dates, you can see that there's uh, two big players going to be leaving the club soon, uh, Danny Olmo and Tyler Adams. And if I'm honest with you, I think I'm open to letting both of them go. Now, Danny Olmo is on £180,000 a week, one of the biggest earners at the club, but he's 32 years old now. Development, if we look at his progress, look at his progress here, you can see it is declining quite significantly, actually, from November to December, apparently. So, we're going to offer him a new contract. I'd like to keep him at the club for another two or three seasons, only if he takes a significant pay cut. And he wants to be an important player. Well, let's say regular starter which yeah, he wants to be an important player. Okay, so that's already going against the grain just a little bit. And he wants more money, 215k a week. 
which I'm not going to give him. Not not at all. He's not going. He wants to be an important player. He's not going to be. We want to get someone else in who's younger and better, in my opinion. Yes, he's he's got a fairly professional personality. He's a great player, but I don't want to be wasting more money on him. I don't want to have a Mesut Ozil situation like we've had when we stream, where Mesut Ozil just hangs around the club on ridiculous wages and it's really difficult for us to do anything else. So I think Danny Olmo is going to go at the end of his contract. Tyler Adams, I think, is also going to be leaving at the end of his contract, unless, of course, uh, we can offer a new contract here. He wants a squad player is fine, squad player is okay. Uh, how much does he want per week? I mean, if we suggest 96, he's happy to take that. Uh, we should have gone a lot lower on that. But I think, again, Tyler Adams is a player that we kind of want to get rid of. So I think today, transfer to try and make some money, because we can't let these guys go for free when they're valued at £18 million, offer to clubs, put him on a transfer list, and see if anyone bites on either of these players. Clubs are coming in offering £18 million for Olmo. However, they want us to pay a lot of wages per week as well, which I, I'm not prepared to pay 80 grand a week for Olmo to not be at the club. Although this would only be for six months, I believe, wouldn't it? Selling team wage contribution, I believe that's just for the duration of the contract at Leipzig, or would have been the like, duration of contract at Leipzig. Yeah, a clause which forces the selling club to pay a certain amount to the player in addition to the wages at the new club for the duration of their current contract. So that would be £86,000 for the rest of the season. Thing is, has Olmo been good enough this season? He has. So I want to let him go at the end of the season. So for that, we might have to reject all these offers, go back in to Danny Olmo, uh, transfer offer to clubs, uh, unspecified, but we have to, is there a way to change it? I don't think we can change when. I think it's got to be like, there's nothing to say when we sell him, because I'd rather sell him at the end of the season rather than now. Ah, well that's a little bit of an issue. In that case, what I'll do instead is try and push his price up to 25 million, I think. Tyler Adams, on the other hand, is getting bids from some clubs of 5 million, actually. So what we'll do with, with him as well is reject all the offers. Hanan wants him. So that, can we negotiate? And We can't negotiate. Let's just reject all these offers and offer him up a 7.5 and see if they come in for that and we'll accept 7.5. Other bids have come in. £14 million offering for Olmo now. That was a bit of a bad deal, maybe. Maybe not go for 25 mil. Let's just go back and offer 18 or 20. 20, 20 million seems seems reasonable to me. Let's go for 20. They were willing to pay 18. I'm sure they're willing to pay 20. So let's try that one again. In the meantime, um, no one's bidding. For, oh, this has not gone well. Okay, let's go back into Tyler Adams and take that 5 million pounds from Henan. Transfer offer to clubs. Uh, go for 5 mil. There we go. Let's try this one instead. Back to basics again. Bids have come back in now for Tyler Adams. Uh, the few Chinese clubs offering, f I mean, Schalke can have him if they want to, to be fair. Schalke wouldn't mind selling him there because I doubt he'll be a first team player there. West Ham are offering actually additional money there. So we'll, we'll do that, but say no to the clubs that want us to pay wages for him because I can't, I don't want to do that. And Olmo, clubs are willing to pay 20 million for him. I'd rather him not go to Cologne. Let's accept Henan and the Chinese clubs, essentially. Accept those ones. Stall on Cologne for now. And those players might be gone. We have to try and get some money for them rather than let them go on a free transfer at the end of a season. I think this is sensible to do. But I am very aware that I have just taken up, like, what, 15 minutes or so of uh, the, the episode and we've barely gone a day into this. So we need to speed up things a little bit. In the meantime though, Thaddeus agarlo has gone one better than he did last season by winning. Oh, this is the broadcaster's African Football of the Year. He didn't win this last year. It was this award where Thaddeus Agarlo came second and he's come second again for a second year running to Hamed Junior Traore. Unlucky there. Oh, two second places in a row for Thaddeus. One day he'll get there, African Player of the Year. One day he will get there. Jez Jezovic ends up winning the Serbian Player of the Year, which is very interesting, but <laughs> congratulations Jez Jezovic for that one. Anyway, that sort of stuff is out of the way now, I feel. I feel I've explained a lot of things going forward with the club, uh, with some young players, uh, trying to sell lots of players and particularly selling some, some big names too. So I think actually it's time for us to sort of just speed up a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to reject this bid from Cologne, I think. And I think we'll be looking forward to the Dortmund game very shortly. If any transfer news happens, I will let you know. This Brinker guy, who is like a backup on that right-hand side for us, useful because he's a backup on right-back and, and right-wing, 
apparently in his contract has got a 20 million pound minimum fee release clause on 105 grand a week to be a backup player not going to improve much more in the future i'd be happy to take 20 million pounds actually even this dortmund want him which is actually a little bit annoying but i again i feel like that's acceptable maybe considering what we want to do at the club we want to bring in really quality players and he's not going to be one of those first team players ever so i think getting 20 million for him is is not a bad shout same with this Lawrence spirita guy all of a sudden bids being made for him he's going to be our third choice right back although apparently he's better than harris bumsovich i don't think so but if he's our third choice center back we want to try and streamline the squad he's on ninety-one thousand pound a week Again, a player that should be gone, really. Can we negotiate these deals with these clubs? Yeah, let's put the... Can we suggest a, a larger, higher price? How about... I don't think we'll accept 15, I don't think. Suggest that. 10 and 4. Go on, make it 12 and 4. And you've got a deal. There we go, great. Oh, even more clubs are now in for this Laurent, Laurent guy. Can we get more? Because this club are offering 12 up front and 4. Can we go for 15 and 5? Will they accept that? Suggest? Right, let's let's reject the other bits of him. We're going to get £20 million for this guy now. Adams is off to Schalke. Potentially a little risky, that one, but he's not going to play for us. Let's get the money in right now rather than letting him go for a free transfer at the end of the season. And on where we're set to go to China as well. £20 million we're getting for Danny Olmo, which is brilliant considering that in six months' time, we would get nothing for him. I, we had to, I know it's a little bit annoying because he's been a good player for us this season so far, but I was not prepared to pay 200 grand plus a week for him next season. And to get 20 mil for him, I think, is is brilliant. Like We, we had to do it. We had to do it, I think. So those two players have gone, obviously in an ideal world, we would have kept to the end of the season, but to get 25 million pounds rather than nothing is you can't turn that down. Also adds nicely to our transfer budget, up to 77 million pounds now. We could get in one or two really big players, actually. So we just played the friendly over winter break. Obviously, Shitigel was doing that game. I don't do the friendlies, but as you can see, it does say three players on international duty, and that is because I thought that was it there. Here it is. Right, you can see Ivory Coast, uh, Thaddeus Igalo hasn't scored a goal there, but it's the African Cup of Nations uh, coming now. So uh, Thaddeus igalo has gone there, as has Kareem Adeyemi, and I think dorbel has gone there as well, actually. Ah, rather annoyingly, though, this guy has now rejected that contract in China. We were going to get £20 million for this left-back, our third-choice left-back. He rejected the contract with them, though. Oh, you hate to see it. Okay, let's offer him out for £20 million again, see if any of the clubs want him. And other clubs do, just mm, not quite as much money, which is a bit annoying. It goes to £18 million, though, after various clauses uh it's better than what we'd get i'll accept it for now i think but 20 million pound from china would have been really good it's taken a while but we've finally got ourselves through to this brucey at dortmund game andre luis is going to stay in goal but we're going to give debuts to our two new backline stars potentially if the uh, star ratings are to be believed uh, cording is going to start at left back and dopatka is going to start at center back alongside omoregic and ferraro there Unfortunately for us, uh, Diogo is currently injured out for another 10 days or so after he got injured in the friendly, which wasn't great. Uh, in the midfield is Katsikas and Morovsky, and actually Dorbel is playing in the attacking midfield. It wasn't him, it was Daru going on international break with Nigeria, not Dorbel. Dorbel is, uh, where's he from? Let's have a quick double check of this. Germany, apparently. He is flanked either side by Jez Jezevic and Zoltan Horvath, with Rogola playing up front for us today. What's going on here? What's gone on here? Why is the hand to assistant manager not there? What has... Have I missed something? No. What? No assistant manager. What is going on here? Andre? Andre? What, why is he gone? What happened here? What? How is... What? No news article. I mean, we are 18th of January now, but what What went on there? Okay, approach to sign. Doesn't want to... What? 
Okay, let me save this game. I'm going to save as. Oh, I can't. The, okay, after the game's finished, I'll save as. Go back to the start of the save file that we loaded up from. I want to see what happened to Shitty Gel here. Well, in the meantime, um, I, I'm aggressive. I'm, I'm really aggressive right now. Very aggressive all of a sudden. So I'm going to be aggressive to all my players. Why did no one tell me that Shitty Gel left the club? I, I, I don't get it. We wouldn't have just offered him a six-month contract. Surely. Surely not. Although I didn't do the contract, did I? The board did the contract when I signed for the club. So maybe they only gave him a six-month contract? Oh my god. Today's episode is just... It's beyond me, okay? We've got some really good youngsters coming through that we had no idea about, essentially, and how they developed so quickly. I'm still very confused by their star ratings and why they are so high and also how they develop so quickly in their star ratings whilst we look at their actual attribute growth and the attribute growth is like one at best in a couple of attributes it's not like they've gone up like three in every single one i'm very confused by that as well as jess jezovic is through and not open for scoring for us we've also sold lots of players all of a sudden which we might regret for the second half of the season but i think in the long term it's gonna be better for the club because we've made some money from it but but shit it gel I'm. Am I? I feel like I'm living in some sort of dream. Am I? Am I awake? I'm pinching my. I'm really confused by everything that sort of happened in today's episode, and just, just, what is? Like I just don't really get it. And here comes Bruce Dortmund scoring a goal against us, but my mind is elsewhere. With with Andre, what happened with Andre? Why is he not at the club anymore? I'm going to assume that he just only was given a six month contract for some bizarre reason. That's what I'm going to assume as they made it 2 0. Oh, dear me. I don't even care about this result right now. I just want to get this game finished. I want to get the game finished and I want to find out what happened with Andre really as aggressive again I'm not happy lads and also not happy that we've trusted Cording and the Patska today thinking that they're really really good according to our, our, our coaches and they've got a 6.2 and a 6.5 rating maybe they're not very I, I, for, what is going on with football manager have I broken the game somehow I don't quite get what Oh my god, that was a very weird... Whose own goal does that go down as? Gabriel's. Or Gabriel's. I thought it was Katabak's own goal there normally, but no, okay. We've been gifted a goal there, which is lucky. I mean, it's a very accurate pass along the byline, really, isn't it, that? But <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what the keeper does, but we'll take the goal at least. Jez Jezovic on a six rating as well. That seems very harsh. He's been the only player that I've seen actually have any, any decent chances. Maybe he just missed really easy ones. That's what it is. He just missed all the easy chances can we just get creative and they, like finish the game maybe look let's just bring on Harish Buncevic go on get back to where you should be I didn't sort the bench out properly so that's the only change I'm going to make interestingly as well it just popped up uh, I just missed it when I was talking but it says Harish is a wonder kid it says Cording isn't a wonder kid but if you look at those two players and their star rating and stuff right now you'd say it's the other way around so oh, Xerxes scores a goal that was a, a bad goal to give away so actually I feel like the players that we've put in the first team their star ratings are massively inflated. They're not that good. And I need to stop relying on star ratings clearly, really, don't I? Oh, that actually did count. That actually did count. I was watching it thinking he's offside completely there, but actually that did count. 4-1 Dortmund uh, in a game where I think the players are as shocked as me that Shitty Gel just wasn't around all of a sudden. Like, where's he? Oh, Shitty Gel, where are you? Okay, 4-1 loss. You hate to see it, really. Uh, not happy with the results out there, lads. Uh, a terrible, terrible game. And given the fact that I'm over an hour into recording, this is going to be a really, really long episode if we do the, uh, where is it, the the Bayer Leverkusen game. So I think we'll skip that one for today's episode. But you did see us beat them 4-0 at the start of the season. We'll probably go and lose this one 4-0 now because I'm still lost as to what's going on with Shitty Gel. So we'll come back next episode for... Uh, I want to say Hertha Berlin Stuttgart, but did we do those earlier on in the season? I don't think... No, we did Schalker and Cologne. So we'll come back next time for, for Hertha Berlin and uh, and Stuttgart, definitely. 
so we'll do that but in the meantime let's just save the game as um as that around that block and then we'll come back to around the block save file and see when shitty Joe's contract was due to expire because i am so confused as to why he's not at the club anymore. Obviously contract stuff comes up on like the 31st of December because it's like you've got six months to sort these contracts out and I just like zoom past it. So it could easily have been there when it was warning me that Shitty Joe's contract was due to expire tomorrow and I've just skipped past it thinking that it was, you know, nothing to worry about. Oh dear me. Okay, so back on that original save file from when we started things off. Um, as we can go back into the, you can see these, these lads haven't moved to the first team yet. Okay, staff. Oh, he's gone there as well. He wasn't even here then. So wh what on earth has happened to him? He's, the, there's no news article there. No news article there. Andre. Nothing. Where is he? He's unemployed. I don't understand where or how this has happened. It's not like he moved to another club because it would have said moved to another club and then he would left that club as well. I don't understand. Because that says he's left in, in December 2030. If we look through all the news articles that are loaded here, it goes back to the 13th of December, maybe left on the 1st of December. We'll never know. Unless, have we got an older save file? I don't think we do. Last save backup was the 28th of this. That seems far too long ago. That is game date the 2nd of May. So no, that's not that. We will never know the mysterious disappearance of Shitty Gel. But mark my words, I will get him back to this club. I will get him back. So I know we're on the old save file still. We have just lost to Dortmund we'll go back to that obviously next time but uh, thank you ever so much for watching the most bizarre episode of Football Manager I think I have ever ever been part of um, not quite sure what to make of it all we'll, we'll get better for next time I think either way drop a like on the video for me subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and uh, I'll see you next time have a good one